Thanks. So good evening again. Uh, I appreciate you coming to the last session. They always save the best for the, for the last at the Spark Summit. Um, so again, we're going to uh, go through real-time machine learning with uh, Spark and uh, Redis ML. I'll start with a short intro um, to Redis and Redis Labs, then I'll continue describing the Redis ML uh, module, and we'll finish with um, an example of building a movie recommendation system uh, with Spark ML and Redis ML combined. Hope we'll have uh, some time for uh, QA. Um, so Redis Labs uh, is the company I work for. It's a great company. It's also supporting uh, the open source uh, Redis. Uh, we have a range of products uh, under the Redis uh, Enterprise suit. Uh, products range from um, fully managed uh, cloud instances uh, through downloadable software and to on-premises uh, managed Redis clusters. Um, well, Redis um, is a pretty famous uh, and popular uh, database. It's a key value store, uh, mostly in memory with persistence uh, to the um, uh, to the disk. Um, it was started in uh, 2009 by Salvatore Sanfilippo. He's a great uh, Italian guy, lives in Sicily. And a lot of uh, big names are using Redis, so it's a good thing. Um, now, what's so good about Redis? Um, the first and very significant point is uh, performance. Uh, Redis is very, very performance oriented. It is written in C. Um, it is single threaded. Every routine in Redis has been polished a lot uh, to be very efficient. So Redis usually outperforms uh, the competition by a margin. Um, a single instance on the cloud of uh, Redis can serve something like two million uh, ops per second at a sub-millisecond latency. Um, Redis is also simple. Uh, there is a very simple uh, set of uh, data structures that you can use like uh, Lego uh, to build the desired uh, result, and also very simple set of commands. Um, Redis is also extensible uh, through the module system uh, API, which I'm gonna show later. Um, so basically, it's, uh, it's not a key value uh, store, it's a key to data structure uh, store. Here's a, a list of uh, the um, native uh, data structures in Redis. So it goes uh, from strings uh, through linked lists uh, to hyperlog logs. Uh, I'll show a quick example. Um, so for example, if you want to set uh, a string in Redis, um, here is uh, the first command uh, set, and the key will be spark, the value will be summit. If you try to get um, uh, spark, you'll get the result summit. Uh, second uh, simple example here is how we set uh, hash table. So it's the command hm set, which is a multi uh, uh, multi set of a hash uh, object. Um, the, the key of the object is uh, Spark hash, and then the key values inside is uh, org uh, would be Apache, and uh, the version would be uh, 211. So if you get it, um, you can get only one uh, key from the hash. If you ask for the version, you will get uh, 211. And if you ask uh, hget all, which gives you all uh, the hash members, you will get the org is Apache and the version is uh, 211. Um, the last example of uh, native Redis will be sorted set. Uh, in this example, I set uh, three keys with uh, different scores. So the first one is uh, foo with a score of one, the second one is bar with a score of five, and then the 
the third one is uh, bass with a score of three. And when I uh, try to get the range of uh, the sorted set, uh, they come in ascending order. Um, now, what we do when these uh, data structures and Lego approach uh, is still not enough uh, to build uh, the solution that we want to build. Then we have uh, the modules API. Um, the modules are actually uh, dynamic libraries uh, written in C or C++ uh, that are linked together with Redis uh, to give it uh, more uh, capabilities. The modules uh, have access to Redis's um, native data types and commands, but you can also create new uh, data structures and uh, new commands. So basically, uh, you have endless uh, possibilities. Everything that you can write in uh, C, you can uh, use Redis as a platform to serve it. Um, we have quite a few models uh, out there already. Uh, I'll just mention the Ready Search, which is a lightning fast uh, full text uh, search engine on top of Redis. We have the ReJSON, uh, which is a JSON uh, database. Uh, we have a graph database. Uh, everything is on uh, GitHub, by the way. Uh, it's open source. We encourage you to contribute uh, some code. Um, any, by the way, any Redis users uh, in the crowd? I was just uh, curious. Let's see. Okay, we have some. Anyone writing uh, code in C? Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so. But try to contribute. So, uh, actually, even if you uh, open issues, uh, it's very, very, very uh, good for us. Um, and I'm going to be talking today about the Redis uh, ML module, uh, which is a machine learning uh, model server. So just let's take a look at uh, Spark, usual Spark machine learning end-to-end uh, -end flow. Um, you load uh, your data to Spark, uh, transform it, uh, perform the training, and then to actually serve the results, there are two ways to go. One way is uh, going batch, pre-calculate all the results uh, for all the possible uh, values or requests, and store it in a, a data store. Actually, Redis would be a very good uh, data store for this kind of operation. Uh, the second way, the upper uh, course, is uh, trying to uh, calculate or classify uh, the request at uh, real time. So you have to somehow uh, serialize your uh, model either by saving it or uh, uh, transforming it to uh, another object. Then uh, you have to write uh, some kind of a server uh, to actually uh, get the request and uh, calculate uh, the classification. So it's quite a lot of work. Now, um, Redis, as it is, being such a good uh, server, uh, we thought we might um, we might just uh, add the machine learning uh, objects to it, and we get a pretty good uh, machine learning uh, model server. So the course of action now is you train on Spark, you load it to Redis, and you have everything ready in production. You can just uh, serve it uh, from this point. So it's a very simple uh, life cycle for uh, serving. Um, it is also quite fast. Um, so, again, uh, the models are stored on uh, Redis ML as uh, real hot objects that can calculate and evaluate uh, the requests. Um, and as I said before, you, you, you get to keep the, the usual performance and uh, scalability of uh, the native Redis. Um, right now, uh, it's a pretty new uh, module. Um, the supported uh, machine learning models on it are uh, tree ensembles for uh, random forests and uh, gradient boosted trees. Uh, you have uh, linear regression and uh, logistic regression and matrices and vectors operation. And more uh, are going to uh, come. Um, 
For today's demo, I'm, I'm going to use a random forest. It's uh, always a good example. It's a pretty popular and efficient uh, algorithm. Um, and usually the models are uh, quite big. So y you can uh, show some, uh, some need for, for uh, this kind of uh, serving. Uh, a random forest is a collection of uh, decision trees. Uh, you get the uh, result of the forest by a majority voting of uh, the trees. Here I have a very, very simple uh, decision tree based on the Titanic survival predictor. Um, it uses uh, three features to get to a decision. Uh, the first one is the sex. Uh, so. If it's a uh, female, the prediction is survival. If not, you go to the second uh, uh, splitter, the age. Uh, if it's um, less than uh, 9.5, uh, the prediction is uh, death. If not, it checks the number of uh, siblings and spouses uh, on the ship. And if um, you have more than 2.5, you die for some reason. Um, that's um, the Titanic predictor. Now, if you uh, try to take a forest, each uh, tree in the forest uses a different uh, set of, uh, of uh, splitters. So you, as you can see here, tree number one uses uh, uh, sex and age and uh, number of siblings. Tree number two uses uh, country, state, and height. And the third tree uses uh, weight, IQ, and eye color. So we have here an example of, uh, of a passenger with some features. And if we would calculate uh, the result of each tree, the tree number one would predict survival, tree number two, uh, death, and tree number three, uh, survival again. So the majority voting would be uh, survival for this example. Um, the API is really simple. From the Redis uh, CLI, you can load uh, the ML module. And here I have uh, the command ml.forest.add, uh, then the name of my uh, forest, the number of uh, the tree, and then uh, the list of nodes. Uh, each node has a path. The first node is just a, a dot, is the path of the root. It's a categoric node which uh, tries to uh, determined by the sex. If it's a male, it will go left, and if not, it will go uh, right. Uh, the node on the left is a leaf uh, that returns the value one, and the node on the right is a leaf that will return the value uh, zero. And if we uh, send a feature vector uh, to run, uh, so the first example I run with the sex is uh, male, I get the result one. If I run it with sex, uh, no thanks. I get a zero. Now this is how it looks on the Spark shell. It's very easy to use after you uh, train your model. You just create an instance um, of the Redis ML forest. Then you load it to Redis with this uh, one-liner there. And it is ready uh, to serve your uh, forest. Um, now, here there is an example of a real-world uh, customer case um, that we heard. Um, it's a net serving company, and the requirement is to uh, serve uh, 20,000 ads per second at uh, less than 50 milliseconds uh, data center latency. They have about uh, 1,000 campaigns, um, so that means uh, 1,000 uh, forests with uh, 15,000 for uh, trees per forest and an average depth of uh, seven. So we did some calculations and with uh, um, like the, the Java classifier, this would re require something like uh, 1,000 instances of uh, C4, eight extra large AWS instances to do this task at this uh, time frame. So it's a pretty demanding, uh, can be a pretty demanding task in uh, real life uh, cases. Um, in our benchmark, we are 40, uh, 40 times, not 40 percent, 40 times faster. So you get to save about 95 percent of the, of the resources. 
uh, which is really impressive. So let's go to our uh, real-world example. Uh, let's build a movie recommendation system on top of it. So we're going to use uh, the data set from GroupLens. It's a very known uh, data set for uh, machine learning benchmarks. Uh, we'll transform the data, train it on Spark, and serve it from Redis. Um, the concept, again, is to create, you have to create one forest um, per movie. Now, the classification here is going to be between one of five classes. Uh, it will return a, uh, the expected score a given user uh, would give this movie. So if we send uh, this user Kitty's feature vector uh, to each forest, we will get the expected uh, rate uh, that she's going to give uh, these movies, and then we'll sort it, and we'll have uh, what to recommend. Um, for the demo I used, um, for, the trans for the transformations, I used Python. The training, of course, is on Spark. The classification serving is uh, on Redis ML. And I packed everything in uh, Docker containers, so it's available as is. Uh, you can download the containers as, and, and just use it this evening <laughs> if you don't have plans. Um, so these are the commands to pull and run the, the dockers. Uh, I prefer to use them binded to the host network, so this is why uh, uh, the minus net equals host. Um, the first uh, docker is a package containing Redis plus the ML module uh, plus some data loaded to it, so it's ready to do some tests. And uh, the second Docker is uh, Spark plus the uh, Redis client on Spark. Uh, there is a package that we wrote. Um, now into some more uh, details. Um, you start by downloading uh, the MovieLens data set. They have the data organized in uh, three separate files. First, you have the ratings. It's a long list of all the ratings each user uh, gave uh, to each movie, and then the rate from uh, one to five uh, with a timestamp. Then you have the movie information, which is uh, the movie ID followed um, by uh, bits, uh, ones or zero, um, of the genre information. So if this movie is uh, action and comedy, and you see the ones in the right uh, places. Uh, then you have uh, the user information, which is the user ID, the age, gender, the occupation. So we try to take all this information and create something meaningful uh, for machine learning. Uh, basically, we need to create uh, one line per user, which contains um, all the user ratings, all the user uh, personal data, plus I added there some um, um, genre averages uh, for each user that might be useful uh, for the decision trees. So basically this is uh, the requirement for the transformation. Um, in a, a later supplied all the GitHub repos um, so you can play with it. So you have to run a script there, um, gendata.py, and it transforms all the downloaded uh, files to the required uh, format. It is in um, libsvm format. If you know it, it's separated by uh, columns. Then we have to uh, train. Uh, our model and load it to Redis. So, in short, uh, first you create your uh, random force uh, classifier, uh, you decide what number of trees you want, and you have to do this for each um, of the output files. Uh, then you train the model, and then you load it uh, to Redis, so it is uh, ready to be served. Then in the execution in uh, Redis is uh, really quite simple. Um, here is an example from a Python client. So you just import uh, the Redis client library. You open a connection. In this case, it's to the local host. Uh, the default uh, port of Redis is uh, 6379. 
So you create an instance. Um, then in the demo, uh, they are supply some user uh, profiles uh, for it to be easy. So you just get uh, one of the user profiles. And the pretty long uh, list of uh, features. I think it's about uh, 1,500 features for each user. Um, actually, I see it's 1,800. Um, and then you execute the command, uh, as I've shown before, uh, the ML forest run with the movie ID and the user profile. And the result you get back is the expected score uh, this user would give this movie. <laughs> Um, here is another example for the Redis uh, CLI. Um, if you use the keys command just to see what's supplied with the demo, you see that I'll, there are 10 movies uh, and one user profile uh, loaded there. So if you run um, the classifier from the Redis CLI, again, you get uh, the expected uh, score. Now, um, the, in the repo uh, script, you, uh, you already have some uh, performance measurements. So it, it uh, compares uh, how much time it takes uh, uh, to run the model on Spark, which is locally, and how much time it takes actually to uh, send the feature to Redis and get it back uh, classified. And you see that even that for uh, the Redis, you have to go out and back. Uh, it is still uh, 60 times uh, faster uh, than just running uh, the model from Spark. Um, and you can see it's close to sub millisecond. It's, uh, and this is on my machine. So it's pretty good performance. Um, to get the actual recommendations, uh, you have the uh, simple Python script just loops uh, through the uh, movies get uh, the uh, result for each movie and then just uh, sort uh, the, um, the result and print the top. So it looks like this. If you run it, you just classify user, user number one, you get all the movies with the scores and uh, the top score went at, in this case to movie number four. Uh, so uh, this is the recommendation. So to sum it all up, um, the way to go is to train on Spark and serve it uh, with Redis. It's uh, really easy to do. You'll get about 97% uh, re reduction in the cost of serving and a really simple uh, machine learning life cycle. Here's the list of all the resources. So. Uh, we have the um, actual uh, Git repos. Uh, there is also a, a Databricks notebook with a similar uh, demo that I presented, so I included it here. Uh, you can use this notebook. And uh, you have the two Dockers that I mentioned uh, before. Um, I think that's it. It's time for questions. See, it's right on time. Thanks. Up. Thank you, Shai. So we have one microphone here and have another microphone on this side. Let's start with uh, this microphone over here. Hi. Uh, I, had, I had a question about uh, pipelines. Um, so on this Redis ML, you only store the model, which is the estimator, or do you also store the rest of the pipeline, including transformers? And if you don't store transformers into Redis ML, when you're serving the model, would you, would you have like Spark transformers in front, sitting in front of the Redis ML piece, or how does that work? You mean about a serialization of the model? How the yes. model is passed? Right, uh, the feature transformation. Yeah, we wrote a little package that uh, serializes the, the models from the Spark objects uh, to uh, Redis commands, basically. OK. And what about feature transformations, like imputations and stuff like that? Again? Uh, what about uh, feature transformations? I'm getting like, closer. Uh, as imputations go, like things like that. I didn't get the question again. So if, if you have like feature transformations that are required for the model to function, okay. like imputations or like dict vectorization, one hot label. Well, it is uh, open source. It is on GitHub. So if there's something that's not there, uh, okay. do it. <laughs> All right, thanks. 
Of course, uh, if, if you do a feature request, uh, we'll program it as well. I mean, it's, we try to cover all the cases. Yeah. Sorry, can you go to the microphone for saying the question? Recording yeah, it. Totally. Thanks. Uh, any limitation on the data size because the, the RAM size is limited? And uh, I'm not sure if the machine learning is still work, if the, the data size is very big. Well, you're speaking here about the size of the, of the actual model, not the, the, the data that you learn from. Um, yes. Uh, it can be as big as, um, as the RAM on the machine that you can have. So we have some instances of like uh, several uh, terabytes uh, memory. Uh, you can also use a cluster. I mean, if it's, if it's a random forest, uh, there is a possibility to spread the trees across. Uh, I've never seen anything on this size, but uh, usually you'll get a lot of forest. But for a single forest to be, uh, more than a terabyte, it's, uh, I don't think anyone has reached these sizes yet. Okay, thank you. Let me know. Okay, so we have one question on the left here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi. Hi. So I have a question. So for Redis, because it is a single threaded, so basically each Actually, the module is uh, multi-threaded. Oh, so the plugin is multi-threaded. So there is a possibility for the modules to uh, run on a separate uh, thread pool. So okay, so how about the request? Uh, let's say when the request comes to Redis and it is handled by the plugin, the, it gets back to Redis. And it's a good question. It's non blocking because the, the modules API allows uh, the module uh, to work on a thread in the background. The Redis can still get um, and more requests. And when you have a callback from the module, you will get the result to the client. So that means for Redis plugin, it can use multiple threading, even though the Redis itself is a single thread. Yeah. OK, interesting. Cool, thank you. OK, one last question. Sure. No, we can So see. I look at the, the movie lens um, uh, data set of Oracle. Actually, a peer side only has um, had uh, like uh, reading data and some movie data. So I was wondering, where do you get the uh, user profile data from? Um, there's just a um, script, the Python script, that uh, transforms it to user, pri uh, user profiles. It's on the movie list, uh, website yeah. Or? yeah, all the data is from there. All right, let's thank our speaker. Thanks, and, guys. And uh, I think you'll be Appreciate still around it. for a few questions. Thanks.